Hi, this is Chris Peters for the Hampton History Museum, and I'm standing in the cargo hold of a ship in our Port Hampton Gallery at the Hampton History Museum. And we're going to take a few minutes today to talk about Virginia Gold, tobacco. And what you see next to me is the real deal. This is Virginia-grown tobacco that has been cured or dried and is ready to be shipped. By the 16-teens, tobacco had become the foundation of Virginia's colonial economy and every Englishman in Virginia was trying to grow it. This is sweet tobacco and it was brought here by John Rolfe in 1610. Now wait, you say, tobacco is native to Virginia. That's right, there is a variety of tobacco that grows here naturally called rustica and it was cultivated by the Powhatan Indians. But rustica has small leaves, it's very bitter, and Europeans didn't like it. They wanted Spanish tobacco. It's not called Spanish tobacco because it's from Spain. This is actually from South America. But Spain was the first country to import it to Europe, so it became known as Spanish tobacco. Rolf got his hands on Spanish tobacco seeds and brought them here to Virginia, where this crop will grow just fine. Now, Spanish tobacco actually comes from South America, and the tobacco that is grown and traded all over the world today originated in the Orinoco River Valley in Venezuela. It has its value on the European market. This stuff is basically worthless here in Virginia. So if you were an English farmer in the 16 teens or 20s, you were growing this, you were hanging it to dry, and then you were packing it into barrels like the one it's laying on to put in cargo ships and send back to England where it would be sold on the European market. This is not an easy crop to grow. While it does grow well here in Virginia, you have to take very good care of tobacco. There are a lot of things that can damage it. Tobacco is a fairly large plant. It would grow to be about five, five and a half feet tall, about the height of a normal person. It has fairly large leaves. Each one is about the size of a sheet of paper, or maybe a little bit bigger. And you have to take constant care of it. If you're a tobacco farmer, you have to prevent weeds from growing around the base of the tobacco because those weeds will suck nutrients out of the soil and hurt the growth of the tobacco. You also have to watch out for these little guys. Now this is a plastic model of a tobacco hornworm and although they're only a couple of inches long, most of them get to be about three inches at their largest, they could absolutely devastate a crop of tobacco because it's the only thing that they'll, they'll eat. They cannot eat any other plants. So if you got enough hornworms into your field, they would eat a lot of tobacco on you. So you had to clear the weeds from around the base of the tobacco. You had to go through the field and look for hornworms and get rid of them. And then you had to harvest the tobacco. Now most of that harvesting would have been done with a tool like this. And although it may look really intimidating, this is a farming tool. It's called a bill hook and they were very, very popular in England. The inside of the curve is sharpened. And while it may look like a very scary weapon, this curved blade gives you a lot of control. So when you're cutting the leaves off of the tobacco, you want to take the ones that are starting to die off first. You have, well, you also have to prune the plant. So you're going to use this for getting rid of the leaves that are diseased or have been chewed up by the caterpillars. And then when you're ready to harvest the leaves, you're going to go down the stalk of the plant and you're going to cut the leaves off. And by having this hooked blade, you have a lot of control. You don't have to swing it like a machete or a knife. That hook gives you a lot of control so that you can grab the leaf and cut through it with relative ease. So bill hooks like this were very common on English farms and would have been a common tool here in Virginia as well. Once you've harvested the tobacco, you have to bundle it the way you see the tobacco here. You have to hang it to dry, a process that's referred to as curing, and then it has to be packed into barrels and shipped to England where it's going to be distributed throughout the European market. All of that tobacco had to be shipped to England, and that meant the places where the tobacco was being shipped would be very valuable ports. Hampton was one of them. In the early part of the 17th century, there were only three tobacco ports in all of Virginia. Yorktown, Hampton, which at the time was called Elizabeth City or Kickatan, the English actually adopted the native name for the area, and Norfolk on the other side of the James River. These three ports accounted for all of the tobacco being shipped back to England, 
and that meant that a lot of wealth was concentrated in those ports. Hampton made a lot of money off of tobacco. Now, the colonial economy was comprised of a lot of other products as well, but that's going to be a subject for another day. So thank you for joining me, and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.